Hi everyone, it's Roger and James here from the What's On Disney Plus podcast. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking all about uh, 2021. We're going to be talking about our favourite things, some of the things we didn't like. We'll also be sharing our thoughts on the latest episode of Hawkeye, but we'll be doing that at the end. So don't have to worry about spoilers or anything like that. So um, this week's episode is a couple of days early because of um, Christmas, so we're not recording them. But we'll be back on re- regular... Uh, schedule from the 1st of January. Also, keep an eye out next week. There's going to be a special episode out with me and Josh where we talk about like the sort of our top three um, good and bad about Disney Plus as well. So we, we recorded that yesterday. So we've got an extra little bonus during the week coming up for you guys. Okay, so before we go any further, if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe either on the audio versions or on the uh, video platforms like YouTube. You can also find us over at whatsondisneyplus.com. Quick reminder, there's a couple of days left on the voting of our Best of 2021 awards. That's going to be closing on this coming Sunday, so make sure you go vote on that one. Also, a big thank you and hello to all of our supporters on Patreon and YouTube channel members, including Sarah. Andrew, Elliot, Jacob, Caleb, Red Mars Man, Aero. We've also got Andrew, uh, Cody, Darren, and Lauren. Well, over on the YouTubes, we've got Ricky, Baba, Dave, Diona, Adam, Muhammad. We've also got Ben, Raphael, my VCR still works, Bina, Joshua, Dawn, Martin, Jeremy, and Sarah. And also to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel members of the Silver Tier as well. You know, all of your support, every little dollar all helps pay the bills and all the rest of it. Right. Now we've got that done. We're ready for Crimbo, you know, the... We're not going to include the Book of Boba Fett because it's sliding in at the very end of the year. But we're going to go through our best of the year. Um, and we thought we'd, the only way we can really start this off, and we've put it in its own special category, what are our top five Marvel series on Disney Plus? In what order are we going to go for? So do you want to go start off, James? Oh, well, um, I'm going to give one more uh, caveat here just at the beginning. Uh, we are doing our rankings based on regional availability. So, Roger, you've got all the stuff that's Disney Plus as well as Star yeah. Originals. Yeah. And even though we talked about Hulu stuff here, I am not including them on, on this list because mm-hmm. this, they are not on Disney Plus. Uh, yeah. That doesn't affect the Marvel category. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only two that are eligible for that would be Hit Monkey and Modoc. Hit Monkey's not available in no. in, so in Europe. Uh, don't don't worry, I didn't forget that. <laughs> um, and, and I don't think anyone will be surprised to find. And Hellstrom, and we don't include, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and we're not including Hellstrom as well because that I didn't finish it. And the thing is, we were we we were thinking of like top series, and we went, it'd be wrong to include Marvel because it would absolutely not give anything else a brief to read. So, what was your fifth favorite okay. of the year? So, so my fifth favorite or my least favorite of the group was WandaVision. Um, it was a good series, but I think a large part of it uh, depends on your love or nostalgia for sitcoms going all the way mm-hmm. back to the 50s and, and on up through the 2000s as i said week after week sitcoms really aren't my thing so i didn't really have the nostalgia thing uh it still ended very strong i love uh, at least the last couple episodes my favorite was probably the fourth episode when everybody mm-hmm. when we start seeing outside the bubble for the first yeah. time you know uh, darcy shows up and things like that uh so even though it's the bottom of the list it, it's I still really enjoyed this series, and mm. I will probably rewatch at least parts of it in advance of uh, Doctor Strange: in, yeah. uh, Multiverse of Madness, which obviously the trailer dropped just before this, or you might have seen it yeah. at the uh, Spider-Man No Way Home uh, post credits. I don't really have much else to say on it. It's a good show, but it's definitely the bottom of the list for me. It's funny because I think, like, obviously when it came out, it was also new and so fresh. And when we were going weekly on it, it was an I- amazing, amazing little thing for like going through it as a television series um looking back on it now I'm, i mean i'm gonna watch it through again i think it, as you said before dr strange 2 arrives um i i don't know if i'm necessarily gonna put it at five i'm gonna slightly push that up to four just a little bit higher on my thing um i i enjoyed it it's a really good series um it's still better than you know most other um superhero shows out there but i kind of i think those first few episodes i mean i remember watching you know, the monster, I mean, I love sitcoms, so I, I kind of was fine with that bit, and I grew up watching, you know, the monsters, and Adam's family, and Happy Days, and so I did, and Mork and Mindy, so I was used to watching them through in black and white, and go, maybe not I Love Lucy's, that was one a little bit before my thing, but I enjoyed it all, I thought it was great, but One Division yeah, is, is that one, for me, the fifth best one, or worst one, but the least favourite, would have been What If, I'm going to slide that one in, at the 
while I liked aspects of it, it didn't quite have the same impact that I was hoping for. Um, again, it there was nothing wrong with it, but it didn't. It, there was just something about it. That it's, it's like if it didn't exist, I wouldn't have been worried about it. Um, but that was my only thing with what if. What about you? Yeah, uh, one one last thought on WandaVision because mm. it, it came up while yeah. you were thinking about it. Um, if they had done a Mork and Mindy episode, I think I really would have loved that. The, yeah, Nani Nani. Mork and Mindy was fantastic. Um, well, and for, I, I mean, that's literally like the only reason I know, I know of Colorado is because of of, uh, of, of Mork and Mindy. That's it. Well, a, a and Mindy with a dinosaur. South, South Park is also in Colorado. So, yeah. Um, but, but yeah. But yeah, if they had a Mork, Mork and Mindy episode, that would have been great. I would have loved to see Paul Bettany try to be Robin Williams. That would have yeah. been that would have been very interesting. Anyway, uh, so our bottom two are mm. reversed. My my yeah. number four is What If. Again, not a bad series. There's some really good individual episodes. We mm. actually liked different episodes. Which, yeah, uh, I love the zombie ones. The zombie you ones. You love the zombie favorite. ones. I actually really like the Doctor Strange one. Um, I like the way they played with that formula, but. As the series goes on, you definitely realize there's only like three or four what if templates, and there's only yeah. so much you can do with them, and they kind of get a little samey. And and some of them, particularly like the Captain Britain one, or sorry, Captain Carter one, Captain Britain's a completely different character. Yeah, um, was just like, well, we're just gonna do First Avenger, but with Carter instead of Steve, yeah. and and oh yeah, Steve gets an Iron Man costume, but it, there really wasn't much to it other than. Let's just let's just have Captain Carter instead of Captain America. And then there were other ones that are just completely off the rails and things doing completely different, like the zombies one. I did yeah. like how they tied it in in the last two episodes. That was we yeah. weren't really expecting that. We we kind of a little bit suspected, but no, mm. it's like everything's off on its own. So it's still good. Honestly, though, I don't see myself really rewatching it. Though. I might rewatch the Doctor Strange one before the Doctor Strange movie comes out again, again, because there might be a hint of um, what's happened in that in this one. So it could be interesting to see how this works out. But yeah, I'd say that way. For me, in my third spot would be Hawkeye, mm. um, and I was actually a bit like imming and ahhing of Hawkeye and One Division of like where because Hawk Hawkeye, I've enjoyed it. But I don't think I'm on the same level as I was with One Division in in my excitement levels. I think overall, I think my love of Kingpin definitely um, helped with this kind of the finishing end of it. But we'll obviously get into that later on today. Um, but I really enjoyed like Yana being involved. I think that added a little bit more humor to it. I liked Kate Bishop a lot. I'm going to be honest. Hawkeye himself is so boring. He's such a <laughs> dull character. He's got like no. Like I don't know, he's just got like no career. I don't know what it is about him. This is just not. It's as it was everybody else I liked about him, but just you know the Hawkeye character. I mean, yeah, he's just not. He's not amazing. Yeah, uh, we'll talk more about this at the mm. end. Um, uh, I'll I'll save my thoughts yeah. for what for I put Hawkeye on my list. Uh, so my number three, I think people might be a little surprised with this, was actually Loki. All right. Um, I again, I really enjoyed it, and I think that. Out of the these five series, it's going to turn out to be probably the most important mm -hmm. one uh, long term, uh, especially with the introduction of Kang or He Who Survived, etc. Yeah. Uh, in that last episode, but I don't know, I, I've got kind of the same problem with Loki as you do with Hawkeye here. I'm just like he's interesting in little bursts, but I actually don't find the character super interesting, mm -hmm. so I'm not engaged with him. I actually found. Um, his alternate reality, gender bent, uh, yeah. Loki, Enchantress, whatever they're going to call her, uh, more interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. See, for me, Loki's actually my was my favorite. Loki was the one that um, I love. The, the the it felt like I was watching a movie. If it it, I, it definitely felt in the at the highest tier out of all of them that if you know. Hollywood actors involved, you know, because that could have been the movie with Owen Wilson and stuff. Um, the jumping around the, the time zones and different places, and you never knew where it was going. And I liked it. I yeah. So for me, Loki was my favorite of the year from the Marvel side. It it hit. It felt, like I said, it felt like I was watching the movie. It didn't feel like I was watching a television because One Division was so strange that it was quirky. And Hawkeye kind of. It did feel like a TV series at some point because it kind of went into it. Um, but yeah, so that was that was definitely my number one. What was your yeah. number two? Well, I, I can't disagree with anything you mm. you said either. I just 
uh, I think it's just basically yeah. the premise didn't grab me yeah. quite as much. It also had a little bit of the same thing that WandaVision, where uh, there was a certain amount of the entertainment factor was trying to figure out what was going to mm-hmm. come next with it, which doesn't necessarily hold up quite well on on um, mm-hmm. second watches or third watches. I think it will hold up better than WandaVision does in that regard, because yeah. uh, there there is still a lot of that forward motion. But I agree. Production values on that were fantastic. Mm-hmm. The cast was fantastic. Um, it is strictly a personal you yeah. know, ranking of characters. Now, by process of elimination, uh, I think we both have the same second one, because uh, it's the only one we haven't mentioned yeah. yet. <laughs> talking to the Winter Soldier. Um, I really enjoyed this one. It, it felt like an action movie every single week. Yeah. Um, Honestly, I could have swapped this and Loki back and forth and went went a bit because the story for Falcon and Winter Soldier definitely is disjointed. You can tell that they kind of had to scramble to to maybe fix some things or change some mm-hmm. things because their shooting schedule got all screwed up. Uh, but in the end, I just really loved that that buddy cop yeah, odd definitely. couple feel between uh, between Sam and and um, Bucky. Just worked really well for me. The action was for the most part really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little preachy at the end, but we were kind of expecting that after all. You know, it yeah, is I mean, America's legacy kind of deal. It for me, I I like the whole kind of the the racial undertones kind of as a storyline uh, being that little bit grittier, a little bit more. Um, you know how America was viewing it, how people were bringing it in. Um, then we had the side effect, obviously, with um, uh, the other Captain America, John. You know, bringing him in. I yeah, I just really enjoyed it. I it was a I thought it was, and also it was so much more grounded one than one division than at the time because here we are at the end of the year we've had all these different series, we've kind of the novelty. I feel like it has worn that effect of it doesn't quite feel quite as you know when we were watching the first two seasons it was like this is you know great and then we had a little bit of a break before Loki it was Hulk I never had that for me that same buzz that i did with loki and where you had to watch it hawkeye just never had that and but falcon and the winter soldier is i think it's a fantastic series i think it's it's easily easily one of the best series overall i think if i was to do like my top five of the year it would be loki and and falcon would actually be in those top five um overall i thought that you know they were both excellent series yeah, and I kind of find this with Marvel in general. Like, if people were to ask, what is your favorite Marvel movie out of the ones that are officially in the MCU? My answer might change based on which one I've seen more recently. Yeah. Like there's three all kind of vying for the top spot, and I have noticed been like, I don't know, it depends which one is closest in my head. Uh, mm. And for the record, that's normally Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Winter Soldier, and mm. Ragnarok and they just kind of move around a bit. And I suspect the Marvel shows will be in very similar situation. Yeah, so I feel, for me, I always I always get the, the, the original Avengers movie is always one that just kind of um, jumps up as being a top one. Right, so that's um, that's the Marvel side of things. So let's, let's shift gears now. Um, let's now talk about non-Marvel. We're going to just do our... Um, what's, which one should we do? We'll do the non-Marvel Disney Plus original series. Okay, so, and uh, just quick reminder again, we're doing this regional base. So Roger yeah. will be working off a uh, significantly different list than yes. I will be. Uh, but yes. Roger, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, so um, for me, I mean, it's a bit of a funny one, really, because, I mean, I'd probably say I'm going to start off with my my fifth probably favorite was uh, Big Shot, because Big Shot came in. It was a basketball thing. I wasn't too sure about it. It was set in high school. wasn't really kind of 100% on it. But over the weeks, and I was not really a big John Stamos fan as well. I'd not really, and not really a fan. I just was, just wasn't really familiar with him. I hadn't. I worked out that I hadn't really seen him in anything, and therefore I didn't have this whole connection to him growing up. With I mean, was it Fun House, Full House? Or Full House. I don't remember watching that as a kid, so I didn't have that. Stage. And so I just and it just kept getting better, and the stories. And I think when it was going alongside the Mighty Ducks, it's like, no, I really prefer this. This is a much better show. I enjoyed watching it week to week. And I was finding myself like, oh, no, I want to see what's happened here. And the story was good. I'm glad it's coming back. But I, I definitely think um, Big Shot was kind of like like one of the top end ones. Um, I'll, I'll come back to Big Shot in a little bit on my list. Um, but I, I agree. It was a nice departure from the rest of the shows. It was one of the first shows that we got that wasn't Marvel or Star Wars we're actually like, no, uh, this is actually a decent Disney Plus original. Because up to that mm. point, 
you know, we've been getting a lot of game yeah. shows and, and kind of uh, just throw this out there because we need to put content on. But I'll, yeah. I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, for me, the bottom, the number five was Marvel Assembled. So we didn't include this in the Marvel series, but this is yeah. know, the making of uh, the various ones. So all but one of them uh, came out this year. Obviously, it was a big year for Marvel movies. And I just really love these behind the scenes stuff. Uh, the Shang-Chi one in particular was really, really well done. Uh, so might be cheating a little bit here, but if you take the Star Originals out of the lineup, the Disney Plus Originals lineup gets uh, rather small, rather quick. So uh, that said, I do genuinely enjoy this series. Yeah. I look forward to seeing them when the, uh, when the movies and the shows come out. I'm looking forward to seeing the Hawkeye one. Um, I don't know if they've announced an Eternals one, but we know that mm. that's probably on the way as well. Uh, and I do put it above um, at least the season two of the gallery. Season one of the Mandalorian gallery was really good, but maybe a little overly long. I, I'm yeah. liking these kind of hour long, 45 minute uh, behind the scene stories. Yeah, I think I definitely feel like with the gallery season one, it was way too long winded. I mean, that was like a four hour. It was nearly longer than the series. <laughs> I, I, again, I think a lot of that was simply like we need content put something out there this is relatively easy to do just just yeah give them something it, it's funny really because assembled i always just look at it it's just it's just the dvd extras and it's a bit like i'll get around to watching it but i don't view it in the same um vein as yeah i, I mean yeah it's, it's kind of a funny one i watch it because it's there and i kind of feel like i, I should watch it but uh, I'm never in any rush to watch it. It's way down, way down on my little category, you know, it, to watch. I will agree with that. It's normally the last thing I watch in whatever week it comes out, unless it is the only thing that comes out, which happened, mm -hmm. I think, at least once. Um, but I, I do enjoy these. Like, I, I was the kind of person who, back in the day when DVDs were still, like, the main medium, I would come home, I'd watch the movie, and then over the course of the next couple of days, I would watch, like, every single extra on it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I did that with the Lord of the Rings extended editions. That took forever, but I learned so much about mm -hmm. the movie making process and how these things were done. And also, I think it's a little different if you're coming in as a comics fan with a familiarity with a lot of these things versus, um, you know, you're, you may be passively familiar with them from the old cartoon shows or, or other movies or things like that, because they do spend at least a little bit of time talking about the legacy of the heroes in, in some of these. And that's kind of fun to see how people interpret their pasts, the, the mm. character pasts. Yeah. See, for me, um, for my, is I actually found, this was actually quite hard for me of like the, the top five, because there was actually a few series I could have included. I could have done easily done a top 10. It was, there was that many because of the star side of things. But for me, um, love Victor. See, I love Victor. We had season one back in February and then we had season two um, in June. And the second season was a far better season than the first one because they knew they weren't making it for Disney Plus, so therefore they went a little bit more edgier. It's just, it was just a, it just felt like a, and it feels like bad to say, but of the high school shows, Love Victor is the one that actually represents being at high school. You know, with going to parties and sex and you know relationships and your parents breaking up it's and it's so i it's so funny I'm like you watch like love victor then you watch like the disney plus version it's like the kids are supposed to, are the same age <laughs> and there's such a a maturity difference um you know like they're 16 17 and it's the same age as they are in doogie the same age they're in high school musical you know and there is such a discrepancy in like and love victor for me was if i if that's the, the realistic high school version i mean it's still a bit um i mean i think they could they didn't I don't think they really pushed in so much on um, uh, the problems that he would have had, had coming out at school. Um, may, you know, it might, it might. I mean, being our age is it's probably different. You know, had this happened when we were at school, it would have been a very different story completely. But I thought Love Victor. I think that was a, it's, it's a fantastic high school drama series. Um, yeah, it, it, it just that second season just kept like bringing it to that next level. Um, and I just really enjoyed it. And I was getting to the point of like every week going, I want to watch this. And that, that's what you like. Yeah, th this was a very good series. The only reason it's not on my list is because it's a, a, a Star Plus Hulu show. So yeah. it's ineligible on my side. But yeah, I, I enjoyed watching this every single week. 
Um, I think it's funny you say it's the most like authentic high school because they they are the the ones who would be least likely to pass as high schoolers uh, in a real setting. But taking that out of the equation, I think it is one of the more authentic representations mm -hmm. of, of high school. I, I do remember uh, talking about the final episode and everything mm -hmm. kind of wrapped up very nicely yeah. in a bow. All the plot threads coming together at once, which doesn't really happen in real life. But you know, it's, it's a show. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be concessions like that. And that final sequence, I think it was episode four or five when uh, the two guys are, are yeah. about to to have their fun and the mom walks in on them and just oh, that it's... whole uh, <laughs> deer in headlights expressions, they nailed it. And it was, I I fell off my couch laughing at that yeah. scene. That was and it's because it's so uncomfortable, isn't it? It was, oh just, yeah. God, it was, it was yeah. so uncomfortable. And, and that's not even like a, a, a gay or straight experience, just having your parents yeah. walk in on you is just like, no, yeah. no, I, no. It, we're yeah. good, don't, don't yeah. need this. Uh, it's just, it's a really good sh series. Um, if you've got Hulu or if you're mm. on the European side of Disney Plus, give it a try. It, it's yeah. good. Okay, so what was your um, fourth favorite? Okay, so as I alluded to before, uh, mm. this was Big Shot. Uh, we mm -hmm. talked a bit about yeah. it. And again, we're going from <laughs> yeah. a fairly serious high school depiction here to um, girls playing basketball with John Stamos. But as you said, this was one of the first series where we're kind of like, oh, no, the, the Disney Plus originals can be pretty good. Now, this isn't mm -hmm. super stellar. This isn't uh, absolute must go out and watch. But in terms of the Disney Plus originals, it's top tier. It it had an engaging story. There were a lot of little plot twists and turns. They they had stuff for the younger audience with the girls having to navigate high school and that girl with the Instagram account and, and all that. But also Stamos had, you know, the adult relationships going on. Yeah. And we got to see that. I do think some of the teachers went a little over the edge on caricature, especially the English mm -hmm. teacher in early episodes. And I don't even remember what which which he was, but the one guy who just really hated Stamos mm -hmm. at the beginning and yeah. kind of eventually warmed up to him. Uh, that did go away towards the end of the series, but the first several episodes, like, give these guys character other than just, uh, you know, over eager um, mm -hmm. drama teacher kind of thing. Yeah, because she was actually because she was a lot better in um, Doogie Kamaloa. She was a much nice scene because I hadn't really seen her before, and seeing her in that as the mum, I was like, oh, you're you're actually much not you. I much warmed to her as the character because I don't, there wasn't a lot of difference, but as, as just in general, yeah. it just seemed a bit more nicer. I'm, I'm going to assume that was a directorial decision yeah. because uh, if it was just her in Big Shot acting that way, I would have said it was yeah. her choice. But most of the non Stamos teachers were just a little over the top mm. um, until the end. Hello, well, I'm from England. <laughs> How are we doing? Catch Crikey Gupta. <laughs> I'm an English teacher. <laughs> I think I blocked that out. I legitimately forgot. That. That I remember just going, oh, shut up. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> he was just no, like, no, we don't talk like that. <laughs> you talk like that in American shows and you're yeah. going to like it. Um, I'll, I, one last shout out that I remember. Mm. The principal was fantastic. Uh, oh, yeah. She, she, she was yeah. top. She was near the top of this show. And I loved how they played her character as both being serious, able to do the administrative stuff, which you know the uh, principal is mm. supposed to do, but being able to be empathetic with the students, which I don't think you see that often in America high school shows. More often than not, the principal is either wacky and goofy or like strict by the books, no sense of humor. And there's very rarely a meeting in the middle. She pulled this off yeah. perfectly. And I'm going to be honest, a big shot for me is also a bit of a, like a personal f thing of, because I, I got to interview all the cast, and I, it was the first time I'd ever interviewed anyone. I was so nervous doing it. I was, uh, um, and it was, so that shows kind of that, that weird thing of like, you know, it's, it was so weird having like conversations with the actress, you know, with seeing it was, it was a very weird experience because I'd never done it before. And I, it was, so Big Shot's always going to have that little spot of just like, that was a really like special thing for me personally with, with that show. But moving now on to my third favorite, um, it was Big Sky. Um, I'm really looking forward to it because the second season is just about to start here in the UK um, in about two weeks. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that one. But me and my wife would watch Big Sky every week. It would drop. Um, a fantastic police drama set in, well, they're not even police drama, but just detectives. 
me and my wife loved this show. It was such a great, and it was, it was, as my wife called it, it's a proper show where we could actually sit there and watch. It was, it was where Star, it was the first Star original um, that came out, like, with Love, Victor, um, was it Hellstrom, Big Sky, and I don't think what the other one was. Um, but it, and it was just that kind of thing. Like, this was a great series that loved the chemistry between all the characters. The villain, you just wanted to get, you wanted him to get caught. Loved it. Absolutely loved Big Sky. Yeah, I, I can't comment on yeah. this. I have not watched Big Sky at all. I know season two is coming out, uh, or they announced it. Um, I'm debating back and forth whether I want to watch season one in, in advance of it or not. Um, I think it would help on that show. I think it's one I think where it probably yeah. would. I think it's more about carving out the time to do it. Mm. Um, but but we'll see. That's that's a problem for the other day. I, I have yeah. no feedback. I've never seen it. No. What about your third one? So my third one, uh, we're going to go with Star Wars The Bad Batch. Um, you will remember I was fairly critical of the show when it came out, mostly because it wasn't really what I wanted from the show. You know, uh, I really wanted, you know, the Bad Batch, even though I didn't necessarily like the characters when they were introduced in the Clone Wars. Like, the show's the Bad Batch. Could we please have the show be about the Bad Batch? And instead, it was a uh, friend of the week that, you know, Dave Filoni or whoever wanted to, to bring into mm. this show. Uh, which is kind of ironic because season two of The Mandalorian was very similar. They just executed it much yeah. better. Um, that said, it still is a good series. There's a lot of interesting action to it. Uh, they had some beautiful cinematography in it. Mm. Uh, there, there were some great landscape scenes. You can really see how they upgraded everything over the Clone Wars uh, tools that they were using back in the day, even for the final season uh, last mm. year. Um, I think it sets up for a good season two. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping for that, certainly. And it's worth remembering, of course, that Clone Wars season one uh, had a couple of really good episodes, but it really wasn't on the same level that later seasons would be. Same with Rebels. Rebels was kind of the same, really. It took Rebels, it takes them a yeah. while to get them going. Yeah. They, I think they once they get all the... like. They got to get the introductions out the way and get everyone in. Um, so you know, I'm looking forward to Bad Batch season two. There's, there's my um, I literally just got it the other day. I'm gonna go the other way. Where is it? it I actually got the 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 ship. I actually got it on a stand so I can display it properly. Oh, is so it the, uh, the yeah. Lego one or? Yeah, yeah, the Lego one. Uh, so that yeah, that's that's cool. pretty cool. So I'm gonna move now on to my second favorite, which is Only Murders in the Building. Um, I love this show. I mean, just seeing Steve Steve Martin, uh, Martin Short, Selena Gomez. This was a series. I went in, I mean, I'm there kind of thinking, you know, the Free Amigos and, you know, that kind of thing with them. And this show just, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I loved the music. I loved the tone. I loved the comedy aspects. I liked the seriousness of it. Um, it's it, it was it was such an, it was a breath of fresh air. I, I absolutely loved this series. Um, one of my favorite ones. It would be in my top five of the year, I think. It would be, like I said, you know, it'd be this one. And then you got the couple of the Marvels ones. You know, this is this is a really great series. Yeah, um, if this was eligible on our side of the pond, yeah. uh, this would probably be the one or two slot for me. Yeah. Um, this would definitely be in the top five of shows overall across mm. all platforms and, and such of the year. Uh, not much else to say about it, honestly. The the one thing was like when they first cast like Martin, Martin Short. Okay, great. Haven't seen him in a long time, but good to see him. Oh, Steve yeah. Martin. Always love Steve Martin. And then Selena Gomez. You're like, wait, what? yeah but but she really did hold her own uh you know yeah. it she brought in that interesting perspective and played off of them but they also didn't do it in like too much of a boomer versus gen z way they well, look, i mean they, i mean they wouldn't even be boomers i mean they're you're talking well, they're no, the next I'm, I'm, I'm i mean they're, they're in their 80s um i no, think no, it was uh, the, i think using the I, internet version of these names <laughs> i mean i like the fact that they didn't play it they, they had a few little jokes because you would expect that kind of thing but i think because they were young at heart in new york it doesn't they they're still like they're, they're not they're still young at heart and it, it, they just played on that and i i an amazing series. I just I, yeah. I can't re recommend it on enough. And and then bringing in um, Tina Fey as mm -hmm. the other podcaster and Nathan Lane. Always yeah. fun to see him. Super excited for season two. They've already made some casting announcements mm -hmm. for that, which uh, mm -hmm. which look great too. Not going to recap them here, but yeah. yeah, very excited for season two. If you've got Hulu or you're on Disney Plus in Europe, uh, definitely watch this. Mm -hmm. it, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. So what was your second one? Uh, my second one here was actually Among the Stars, yeah. uh, which was the 
it it kind of gets in on a technicality because it was four yeah. episodes rather than like a single documentary like yeah. Apollo. 11. I think it was but, six actually. I think it was. I think it was a bit longer. Yeah, you're correct. It was six, um, which can get a bit long if you're going to stretch it all into a single because they did drop yeah. it in one week. Uh, but having said that, you know, both of us we love space. Mm. We love the space program. We love all that stuff. Uh, and coming on the heels of the right stuff last year, this mm. kind of hit me sleek. It's just exceptionally well done. If you have any interest in the early-ish days of the space program and, and then on up into to now, get to see what it's like. Yeah. Get to see a lot of the stuff that you don't see in a typical IMAX documentary because those are only like 30 minutes long. This is a really good series. Probably not going to binge it, but... Uh, yeah, but I think for me, um, I think as I did binge it in like two, three days, it was a little bit like, oh, I'm, it's always all blending into each other a little bit because, but it, it was, it was an amazing, series. and you know, you, like you say, you're following the steps of people becoming astronauts and then what they do on the, sh on the ship and what they do, you know, it was a very, a very, very well made. I mean, high, high quality show. But, you know. And they didn't shy away from showing some of the ugly stuff too. Now they didn't really go into the depth of it. They didn't really dwell on it, but there were definitely times when I'm like, yeah, this is just a fact of life in space or in the preparation for space and just got to get over it. Or you just got to know how to handle it. Really good show. Um, but I also admit I am a bit biased on this front too. I, I, I knew I was going to love it unless they, they, it was just like filled with inaccuracies, which of course it was not. Okay, so what was um, your next one? So the last one, the, the uh, top of the Disney Plus originals in America was the Mysterious Benedict Society. Um, we raved about this show when it was coming out. Uh, I just loved the feel of the show. I'm super excited for season two. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I could I could probably talk for like 45 minutes on why I, I really enjoyed the show. I'll spare you that. I'll just say... Um, if you have Disney Plus only for Marvel and Star Wars, this is one of the ones that I would tell people to branch out, especially if you're a Wes Anderson fan. Uh, it's not by Wes Anderson, but it's got the same vibes. It's very different. I mean, I, I think it probably would have been in my top ten. It would have been. It would have got an honorable mention um, because I liked the aspect of it. Um, it felt different. I felt like I was watching something different with it, um, and it was exactly what I think Disney Plus would need. Was this is a series? If you were going to say, okay. What on those besides Marvel and Star Wars? I'd be like, right stuff. Mysterious Benedict Society would be in that thing because I think an adult could enjoy this, even though the kids are in it. Um, again, a, a great, a great, great series. I also, it was lucky as well. I got to speak with the cast of this movie earlier this year, and that just made made it even more enjoyable because it was just like it was just such, such a fun. You know, the you know the kids in it are great and. It, it is just um, a really lovely series. And kind of like, it is a, just a really lovely series. It's, I can't speak highly enough of the kids um, because this particular type of acting is, is actually mm. really difficult for the kids. There's a very emotionalist mm. feel to it. And most kid actors are taught to, to be over-expressive, you know, to, to stand out. And they, they did the deadpan very well. But then also the adults had some very interesting stories. I was particularly uh, fond of... Uh, Colin is Milligan? not really the right thing. Yeah, but like I, Milligan was it? Milligan? Yeah, Milligan, yeah. Uh, Benedict's sidekick. Was, yeah. I, I loved watching his story just kind of come together, and he was played so perfectly in yeah. that. It was funny because I saw him in that, and then um, later in the year, because I was binge, binging my way through The Walking Dead, he then becomes he's a major villain, <laughs> a major character in The Walking Dead. So it's really weird seeing because I kind of seen him first in Mysterious Benedict Society. Um, yeah, it's yeah, that's and I'm gonna as well. Um, uh, season 11 was a exclusive, so technically it wasn't an original for us, but that was another one of my favorite um new shows of the year for us on Disney Plus. So I'm moving on to my last favorite non Marvel series. I'm gonna say Dope Sick. Um, Dope Sick was um, an incredible, incredible series. It was. I mean, heartbreaking. It was infuriating. It was ups. The the acting in it was amazing. It's a stellar cast. I mean, it just feels like you're watching a movie. I mean, it did help. I think because I watched the first two episodes um, at the London Film Festival on the big screen. Um, but it just it there's something about it. It just like it. I mean, me and my wife would watch it every Wednesday night. That would be like our Wednesday viewing. Um, would be like after after, and it was just like. We just, it was just it was just great. I was 
completely caught, you know, thrown off, straight in, straight down, and like completely caught my attention. This was just Michael Keaton in it was amazing. The act, acting, it, it was. This is a top series. I, I loved it. It was so dry. It was yeah. It was it was on a different level than anything else that we've seen. I think so for, of the year. Uh, th this would have been my number one as yeah. well. This was just an all around fantastic series for all the reasons you said. And I think the only thing I really need to say about it is that for every other Disney Plus star original mm -hmm. that we watched, I watched them with the yeah. English release dates. Uh, mm -hmm. So even though they dropped completely on Hulu, I'd watch one episode at a time. Mm -hmm. Now, there was some confusion about yeah. when this was going to release, and you were a couple of weeks behind mm -hmm. and so forth. But I ended up watching the whole thing <laughs> the of like five or six days. And it's just like, this is the only show that I did that with, uh, yeah. that we talked about on this. And I think that alone is really all you need to know. Mm. This was a great series. Um, I did talk to one of my coworkers who mm. apparently his his wife got addicted to that. Uh, yeah. To Oxy, um, Oxycontin, Oxycontin, yeah. Back in like 2012 or something like that, and so he went through the whole rehab process with her, and he yeah. said he can't watch this because it's just too real for him. Oh yeah, uh, which yeah. I totally get. So if you're in that situation, if you have uh, had this yeah. affect your family directly, you may want to hold off on watching well, it because it is very, very. Interesting. I think I think like from obviously from my point being looking out for, for like from the UK over the US, it was like I wasn't. I remember that you know like being out in America and then we were talking about it and stuff, but I never really understood. I, this to kind of highlighted the situation. It it was just an amazing series, and I it's it is it would be um just one of the one of my top ones. Um, moving on from there, um, any honorable mentions that you couldn't quite fit in? Because I need I've got a few that um, but anything else you wanted to just well, throw in? If, if we go into that you the, the if we get the Hulu um mm. Hulu and and Star Originals, yeah, I can get a couple of honorable mentions. But honestly, yeah. for for the American Disney Plus originals, even then I was kind of reaching. That, that's that's kind of why like a Marvel uh, assembled showed up on the list when it probably really didn't have any reason to. Yeah. Um, but you've actually already yeah. mentioned the ones that I would have included. Mm. Um, yeah. Well, and, I, I I'll yeah. sort of the, the Glooming was a series that aired here in the UK. It was another show. It was an Australian uh, police drama which aired on Stan in Australia and it was released over here in the UK. And it was these two detectives tracking down um, m murderers, but it was like a bit witchcrafty. Uh, me and my wife watched it. It was a bit spooky, a little bit crazy. Um, it was just, um, it, it was a really good, it was just a really good series. Um, and I think as well, being set in Australia and in, in, on Tasmania, it's a bleak and, hot, you know, really in the winter and it, it's it was a really good series i just i just i wanted to bring that one up because it was like between that and big shot i was like oh, yeah it was pretty close for me of just like what to go for um there is also um solar opposites was a show i absolutely loved because i've got to see both seasons this year and they were both really good ones um they they were really good shows that i just fell in you know i'm completely in on those characters now because they are just they're just bonkers um but yeah um so yeah so solar opposites was definitely being there i also did enjoy the the will smith welcome to earth i thought that was a, a good solid series um but yeah so there we go i just wanted to throw in a few extra like freebies just because they were they were good <laughs> I, I would also second um the the gloaming the gloaming yeah however you pronounce it I, I know they pronounce it a couple different ways in the show so i'm not really sure where they're yeah. supposed to go with it um what i really liked about it more was that it's a different perspective on a genre that we know very, very well. Uh, and I'm not talking about the paranormal angle. I'm talking about the Australian slash New Zealand angle on it. Uh, this is one of those shows that I would wheel out and go, you know, you've seen this plot before, even with the paranormal stuff, you know kind of where it's going, but because these filmmakers have a different um, tradition than we do, yeah. they, they, ha they have different storytelling traditions. There are parts to it that are unexpected simply because you've never seen it told this way yeah i mean i think for me i mean generally like as a whole like british shows um police dramas and stuff they're 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 generally we, we i'm used to this like three to six episode kind of short seasons um you know the what ifs and all this kind of thing so i've this is why this whole thing with these like disney plus series and star series of them all being short seasons the same thing with the marvel and stuff. for me it's perfect because it's actually what we do here in the uk for nearly at much all of our series and they're better. They're just generally they're better condensed stories. And 
yeah, um, the blooming was just a great, a great little show. Um, um, yeah. I had just one last thought on that. I, mm. I would always agree with that. Normally I, I far prefer shorter series that are much more focused than, mm. uh, these long expanded American, uh, seasons that we get. And, and the, the classic example we always bring up would be like the Marvel Netflix shows where yeah. they were, they were kind of compressed. Well, Even they were, they I mean, over long. Yeah, uh, I mean, you think they're, they're 13, but when you think of like uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and stuff, like 22, 20 odd episodes, um, you know, and they were just fluff, you know, they were fluffing for most of it, they, um, which you don't can, get so much. You, you can tell the difference between even um, like the eight episode Defenders, which wasn't mm. necessarily a great series, but was focused all the way through, yeah. versus, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are going over to the CW shows like The mm. Flash and Superman, where you just like, you've got to fill 22 episodes. There is going to be a lot of fluff and filler and junk, if mm. we're being honest. Yeah, I'm gonna. Miss, I think we could have done with another episode of, of Hawkeye in between to kind of stretch I, out. That yeah, we're starting to get the other end yeah. of the spectrum yeah. now. Where it's kind of like no, no it, you've got the time. Expand yeah. it out a little bit. We'll come back to that in a moment. So let's now shift over to the movie side of things. So let's now shift to um, our favorite original movies. Now, um, as far as like Star Originals, there's only really going to be one on my side. Um, but there's been there wasn't a, it wasn't as as an a big impressive one as maybe we had hoped for this year. It, the movies were, I think they were lacking because not only the pandemic when they didn't shift as many over, but because we were getting premiere access and then we got we started getting all the theatrical releases dropping in. In some in mo, in many ways, 2021's movies are far better than 2020s, but. Because of the theatrical ones, it feels like we've had a lot bigger ones. But um, let's start off with the originals. What was your, um, or what were some of your highlights? Because I mean, we probably so, want to do a top without, five because I think that's all there was. <laughs> without Star, the, the the pickings were very, very slim. And in fact, the, yeah. Ron's Gone Wrong was originally on this until you're like, no, 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 that that's actually not a Disney original. <laughs> Dang it, now I need to find another one. Well, um, we only and, had, what, four? We only well, we had... had well, this is why I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm dipping into the National Geographic's bucket here yeah. to fill out the list. So um, number five is going to be The Rescue. Uh, this was yeah. about the, uh, the children trapped in the cave. It came out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, don't take it being number five as, as me thinking it wasn't no. particularly. This is actually a really, really good documentary. Um, I think almost everybody watching or listening to this will probably remember some form mm -hmm. of those events because they weren't that long ago. Uh, but this really does set the stage lay out the problems, uh, show the challenges, and then you really do feel like the like there is a triumph at the end mm -hmm. of it when they get the kids out. Uh, spoilers if you don't remember the news from a couple of years ago, I suppose. But uh, yeah. this is absolutely well worth watching. If the kids hadn't survived, it might be a different story, but we do, yeah. we do know that they make it. So you can go into it knowing that there will be that happy ending. But not the entire story is happy. It will, you, you know, let you know that. I mean, not. I'm going to be honest. This this was would have been this would have been one of my this is one of the best documentaries of the year for me. If this doesn't get nominated for an Oscar, and if it doesn't pick one up, I I I would be very surprised. I mean, I can see the first wave picking it up on its on the tone of what's going on right now, but um, I think yeah. <laughs> I think the, the the rescue is is an is an amazing documentary. It, it, I mean, I was completely captivated by it. Completely just sucked in me and my wife watched it together and we're like this is a fantastic documentary um that was a really good one um, actually uh, in retrospect i probably should have put this higher i think it ended up at the bottom mostly because it was like i need a fifth oh yeah this came out and <laughs> yeah really um yes yeah, so it, uh, it's that kind of thing it's like for me like like the movies the other one that um i really enjoyed this year was vacation friends which was with um, John Cena. This was a star original series and a movie, and then it was on Hulu in the US. Um, just a fun hot trip to Mexico that goes crazy. It's a fun movie. It's stupid. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not meant to be fun. It's not meant to be anything other than that. It was fun. And in a summer and in a year when we've not been able to leave this island, <laughs> get away. Um, this was as close as we could get to Mexico, and I love Mexico. And um, I just, I, I thought this was a fun movie. Um, it was stupid, funny, and you, I can't go wrong with it. I just enjoyed it. The, this was really good. Um, again, uh, Hulu, so it's not eligible on my side. Uh, 
this is not the type of movie I typically watch. Like stupid mm. comedies aren't my thing, but I did genuinely enjoy this. And you know, even a couple of years ago, if you said John Cena would be making good movies, you can like, uh, you know, I know The Rock's doing okay, yeah. but Cena really? And then between this and The Suicide Squad, um, which was otherwise not a particularly good movie, but Cena was really good in it. Uh, it's just like, all right, let, let's see what you got, Cena. I'm looking forward to yeah. his solo series on HBO Max and seeing what other movies he's got down coming down the pipe for us. Yeah, I gotta find out where I can watch that in the UK. I don't know where it's coming on to. Um, so, is a bit in terms of like the other movie for me really was Luca. Luca was um, an amazing, an amazing film. I loved it. Again, I had that summer vibe of, Ita of Italy and, you know, the idea of being off and some far distant shores and being able to have a vacation. I love the brightness of it, the colours, the characters, the with Domino Bruno. And it just was fun. And I just really thought it was a nice, fun, easygoing movie. And I I loved it. It was just it was just a lot of great fun. Um and I I can't really it, it was I think that's it. It's just fun. <laughs> yeah, it this is classic Pixar. Uh just just a really all around good movie beautifully shot uh the characters are great i particularly love the the silent dad mm. fisherman and we got we got a little bit more of him in the short that, that came after this um this was actually my number one for yeah. the year um just just fantastic movie and i can totally understand why uh pixar might be upset that this did not get a proper mm. theatrical list or, or or even a premiere access uh this was a great movie that they put together and it deserved to to be there but i can also understand why disney didn't do that because they mm. th they do need to show the, the value of disney plus and you do need this top tier content on it uh for everybody on occasion um yeah i, I hope that pixar will will get back into theaters that they don't become mm. the the straight to disney plus uh even if yeah. they do keep the level of quality because they do deserve to I'm really hoping with I'm really hoping with turning red that at least get a 30 day like encounter kind of opportunity to kind of show it. Again, the trouble is with the like the movies this year is like like isn't it? We've mentioned like you know they literally was like that Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Home Alone, and I'm just trying to think of, and Flora and Ulysses. There was literally like only four movies technically that were Disney Plus originals, um, and. Yeah, Flora and Ulysses was fine for what it was, it, but it was completely unmemorable. Home Sweet Home Alone was, yeah, un, unremember. You know, you didn't even make it through. <laughs> home, home Sweet Home Alone was junk. I will come out and say, yeah. That. Um, Flora and Ulysses actually mentioned that. That that's mm. my third one. I think if I was reordering these with more thought, it would mm. go below the uh, the the National Geographic's documentary. So we already mentioned. Mm. Um, I basically treated this as a Squirrel Girl movie uh, from the Marvel <laughs> Universe, which is a character that I, I really adore. That said, it, it is a fun, fluffy, otherwise forgettable movie, but it is well put together. It's fun. Uh, not much else to mm. say about it, but it, it it does make for a good, just like, uh, yeah. stick the kids in front of this and, and let them enjoy the antics of this superpowered squirrel. Mm. Um, so I think that pretty much wraps up the movie side of things. I know you um, also, there's also the specials, because this was the kind of thing of, technically, um, there was a few special releases of the year, which included I, um, the Muppets. Yes, so I included this on the list, mostly yeah. as a technicality, but the, the Muppets yeah. Haunted Mansion, <laughs> I really enjoyed this. Um, it, it felt like classic Muppets. It felt mm. like, you know, they really hit their stride with this. The cameos um, were entertaining without being you know, in your face or overblown, which can be a problem with Muppets movies. Mm. The humor really hit. And then of course, I just enjoy the Haunted Mansion ride. And this was a nice yeah. little tribute to the Haunted Mansion. Um, yeah, it, I you could debate whether this is a Disney Plus original or not, but again, kind of had to reach a bit. Uh, that's yeah. the, this, this is still number two on my list and that does include um, reordering with the National Geographic. Yeah. This was just a lot of fun. I'm totally yeah. watching it again next year for Halloween. Uh, this might become one of the, the staple annual watches. Yeah, because I think the thing is, it's like I was thinking like like with like movies as general, because obviously we've had we've had to. I think we've had a really good run of movies. Probably you know we had you know we've had Raya, we've had you know, Black Widow, we then had Jungle Cruise, Free Guy, Shang Chi, and then I was going and then and I'm going well actually those are like five major releases on disney plus so that's top five <laughs> so it was a bit like it's like 
kind of worked because we just didn't really have a lot of movies released. Um, I mean, Cruella was okay, but I, I, I'm it was okay. It just was, but you know, generally as a whole, Disney Plus looks a lot. It looks a much better place of all these new releases because of getting things like Shang Chi, which is just an incredible film. I mean, probably one of my favorite movies of the year. I love actually, Free Guy. Yeah, actually, just real fast. Um, yeah. There, there were a number of Marvel movies this year. Mm. We didn't prep this one in advance, so this is off yeah. the top of the head. How would you rank the Marvel movies of the year? Um, I'd probably go Black Widow. Then I would go with Eternals, um, Shang Chi, Spider Man. I would reverse Black Widow and Eternals, but otherwise, same list for me. Yeah, Black Widow was fine, but it, it, it just didn't excite me. Um, I've, I've I've got like no real. I mean, I yeah, I watched it twice on Premier Access, and it was just like, yeah, okay. It it, it um, it's Yen funny. is the only thing I liked about it. I didn't like Black Widow. He's just boring. Just just a boring character. I could have done more with Red Guardian as well. There was a lot of potential in that character, and and they. They kind of undercut him by making the serious scenes uh, turn into punchlines for jokes on him, which I think might have been a mistake. Um, we'll talk about Eternals next year when that comes into to Disney mm. Plus. But my really quick take on it was I really respect what they tried to do with it. Uh, there were a lot of very interesting ideas in it. I think the execution didn't mm. quite make it there, though. So I'm I left with frustration. I, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I, I went into yeah, that one. But obviously, we're gonna watch it. We're gonna watch it again when it drops on July the twelfth, and then we'll talk about it. Because I actually do want to watch it again, and that's that's a, that's a, <laughs> that I think is a good thing of like going. Actually, no, I do want to watch it again because of um. I think I went into it like, and I feel like I might know a little bit more going into because I went in blind on that one. Um, like I said, there's lots of other ones. So there we go. So that was our like best of 2021. Now then, I'm gonna flip this. And again, no pre-prep on this one. So if you had to pick um, your worst original. So we're going to have five. So we're going to have five each. Movies, end series, anything at all. What would you think? So I'm I'm going to kind of, um, I think. You need a list. Of what you need a list. It's now. definitely, <laughs> this is the thing. This is why, this is why I was like bringing up, um, like, so, I mean, obviously I have got some of the star stuff as well. So I, I got a little bit of an extra advantage on this but um it's like that there was there was a lot of fluff there's, you know, there's been a lot of fluff this year on terms of what has been on disney plus um now you know it, there, it, there like i said there were some big ones there were some disappointments things like next and rebel like being cancelled and why the last man being cancelled beforehand but for me i mean it it was like i think Stuntman was probably the one that stood out as being such a disappointment because it was such a slow and plodding documentary with like one five minute decent bit at the end. It was such a plodder. Yeah, it was uh, so that was that was definitely in, in like my like in my just disappointments of the year. Yeah. So so these aren't going to be ordered because we're no, kind of doing no. this off the cuff. I would one hundred percent agree. Stuntman was actually the second one that came to mind for me. Yeah. Like. You've you failed at your most basic task, which is to tell me why I should care about this person that you're making the documentary about. Um, it it seemed almost like mm, excuse me, it seemed almost like an evil can evil documentary rather yeah. than about this guy. And like I already know I don't like evil can evil as a person. Like his stunts are fantastic, but as a person, I I yeah. do not like him. So if you're hero worshiping him to this extent, I'm not sure how much I feel about you, uh, mm. the person in the film, and. And then it was just kept going and going. Like, get to the point. Yeah. Uh, the stun at the end was was decent. I'll give it yeah. that. That was entertaining. But if you're gonna watch this, just cut to the last ten minutes and go from there. You're not missing much of anything. Um, also, to be fair, the first one that came to mind we already mentioned, which is Home Sweet Home Alone. It's like this. <laughs> oh. it, it, it's the thing is, it's like I remember watching and going, it's not as bad. It's not. It's not terrible. It's not dreadful, but it's really hard because we, me and my wife, we watched Home Alone again, the original one again. Um, I think like a week or two ago, and I remember getting to the end of it. And I turned around and said, "They really shouldn't have bothered with those other ones because this is so good." You know, we're watching this like thirty plus years later, going, "This is such a good movie." They, why have they kept trying to recatch this? Because it just doesn't never work. Um, yeah, Home Sweet Home Alone would definitely be on my list because yeah. you know. It, 
it, it, it's a shame because I think the problem was, and I still think it was making the villains the good guys mess, messed it up. It just made it like you you didn't, you know, when they were getting the hit, you did. Whereas when you're watching the Sticky Bandits getting hit, you wanted them to have it. You know, they were nasty little. I was, yeah. It was such yeah, a no. they, they failed at basic fundamental storytelling, which is you have to dislike the villains more than you dislike the hero. You can have an unlikable hero. Uh, you know, there are plenty of movies uh, with heroes that you're like, in normal situations, I would hate you. But the people that you're fighting against are so much worse. I'm going to root for you now. That That is basic action movie storytelling. And, and the Home Alone movies are basically action movies for kids. Yeah. Um, so right out the gate, you're like, this kid is a little snot. And mm -hmm. I don't like him at all. And I feel bad for the villain. So you're, you're already up on the wrong foot. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, this was just a misfire. Why are you making this? Even the movie itself, which is where I turned mm -hmm. it off, was like, why are people making remakes? And everyone's good. I'm like, yeah, you nailed it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I was going to say, another one of mine um, has to be Doogie Kamaloa, MD. Um, a series which is like, I love the setting, the Hawaiian setting. I actually thought that worked really well. You know, the actors and that. I even think the actors and stuff, they all... I've not got a problem with what they did, but the stories were so dull. They were such a dull series. They didn't utilize a being a teenager and the conflicts of being. Uh, they didn't go into doctor side enough, and they didn't go with the teenage side. And it was, it was just a disappointing. Yeah, it was such a bland, blare show. Um, I, I think, it was just disappointing. I think that's it right there. It's bland. Um, it's, it's not a bad show. Per se, it, it does its part well. This isn't like Home Alone, where you're just mm. kind of staring at it as a train wreck. This, th there are good parts to it. I particularly like the dad. His storyline yeah. oh, of, of, of coming to accept his middle agehood, especially yeah. that one particular one where he's in the surfing contest and they put him in the elderly division. He's like, I'm not elderly. I'm like, yeah, you're only five years older than me. I agree with you. But, um, but him coming to terms with that was a really good storyline. Mm. But of course, it's not his show. It's Doogie's show. Yeah. And it just couldn't figure out what it wanted to be. Did it want mm -hmm. to be a high school comedy romance thing? Did it want to be a fairly serious medical drama? It, and it yeah. never found a way to put the two pieces together. My one, my biggest one was the one where she suddenly went and became like the head cheerleader of like, she's not even at the school and she was like literally the head cheerleader by within the work. And it was like, come on. Like, yeah, it was just, yeah. So, it's, it's um, like they, it's like they picked a list of high school tropes <laughs> and stuck them in there, whether or not it made sense for the character yeah. at all. So what else jumped onto your list so this year? It, it saddens me to say it, but uh, the Mighty Ducks Game Changers, I think, has to be on the list. I, I love yeah. the original movie. I, again, I'm biased. I played hockey. I enjoy hockey. So the, it was already on a good step. But this series, it just misstepped all over the place. Again, it couldn't quite figure out what it wanted to be. I am willing to give it the benefit of the doubt that some of this is COVID related, just like we were talking about with like Top yeah. and Game Soldier. They they probably got screwed up with the scheduling. But even with that, they kind of just missed all the important points. Yeah, see, for me, with, with it's like the first three episodes of The Mighty Ducks were great, and then COVID hit, and then they just rushed through the storylines, rushed through the process, rushed through all the cliches, and it was just like, I... And then Big Shot got released, and then Big Shot just completely just under... They never should have released the two of them together. That was the biggest mistake. Um, and looking back at us, our release schedule now, of like we really could have done with a little bit more at this end of the year than having two sports shows going toe to toe, literally. Um, and then, you know, it, it was just, it was just a, I don't know, it, it was a yeah. disappointing show. Yeah. Um, going, coming out at roughly the same time as Big Shot, because they had, they had an overlapping schedule. One started earlier than the other, but did it no favors at all. <laughs> but, but to be clear, even if it had come out on its own and Big Shot came out later in the year or, or vice versa, this would still be on the list. Mm. It, it, it comes out worse in comparison, but it already wasn't starting at a high point. And, and again, it saddens me to say that. I really wanted this to be a really good show. I'm hoping season two will be an improvement now that they'll they'll hopefully have a chance to do it properly, even if Emilio Estevez is not coming back. Um, we will obviously give it a shot when season two is. And I, I'll keep my fingers crossed that they do a better job.
Yeah, and then for, for me, finally, really, it was um, Turn and Hooch. It was just a disappointment of just this whole thing of just it executed at the beginning it changed it shifted and then it went nowhere over 10 episodes and then we got it's like you watch the first episode where it redid the movie and you can watch the last episode where it cut everything up and everything in between makes no difference nothing happened <laughs> and there's yeah the thing that got me more than anything and i harped on this every time we mm. talked about it was that non-romance between him and the dog trainer where yeah. every single week you like just ask each other out Please. Well, it would have been so bad if they'd actually got. I I could have actually even if they got to the end and at least he asked her out or they kissed or did something. It would have at least been another kind of you know the will they won't they thing is a standard trope. But and then they introduced this other girlfriend, which you like. You've got like there's nothing there. It was just yeah. It was a very disappointing one. But there we go. That was yeah. I mean, it's just it's it's unfortunate really. There had to be a few of those, but like so we just wanted to do them off the top of our heads, and um, it, yeah, it was funny. Last thought on Turner and yeah. Hooch. This was another one alongside uh, Mighty Ducks, where I really wanted it to succeed. The original movie was really good, mm. and I I have loved Matt Nix's other projects, The Gifted and mm. Burn Notice. So when this didn't live up to hopes, so it it stung all the more as a result of that. I I think the trouble is again, it, it's like this whole thing of them. And I put this down to of them trying to work out where this balance is for Disney Plus of what is and what isn't, and you know they 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 they're testing stuff, they're trying some things out, and this one was definitely a casualty of that one. But like I said, you know these are just ones off the. I know yeah, a couple of people going, yeah, we know you guys don't like these two sh these shows. It's like, well, yeah, we don't, and it's like that we are, you know, ultimately, you know, that is the whole thing of. You know, options and choice. And we've had a lot of choice this year. So we've had a lot of great stuff. It, it's also worth remembering we don't go into any of these shows um, wanting to dislike them. I'm not like, oh, Turner and Hooch. I am going to hate on that show so hard. Yeah. What? Or, or even Home Alone. Home Alone's. Yeah. We both the into it with an open mind. <laughs> we're, we're both like, okay, it's got the card stacked against it. But maybe they'll pull it out, and he, and we were hoping it would be good, and then you get to it's like, go, go in with low expectations, and then you know, and then it's like, cool, you know, I enjoy it, and I usually most of the time that works. But yeah, so there we go. So that is like our best and worst of of the programming. So before we um head off um for Christmas, we're just doing a quick rundown through the finale of Hawkeye. So what did you think of the finale? Overall, I really enjoyed it. Uh, mm -hmm. It tied up a lot of stories nicely, set up a couple stories. Uh, for the future, there was one particular thing I did not like. We'll, uh, it's probably on most people's minds. We'll come back to that at the end. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it overall. But like you said earlier, I think there probably should have been another episode to flesh things out a bit more. Yeah, I mean, I thought this was, I thought this was probably the second best episode of the series after episode three. Um, I loved all the action. And we finally got to see them kind of getting together. You know, Hawkeye looked like he was actually competent in this, you know, taking people out. Um, it's still that kind of thing of you guys are taking on this track suit mafia, which are kind of like the, the rent of cop video game like thugs. You know, you guys are really struggling here at this point to take, you know, you, you've taken on much worse than this. You know, the and it's like it's fine. I enjoyed it. Um, I thought the whole stuff with Kingpin, um him battling it out in the toy store. On one hand, it like I felt like it's you know, it weakened him a little bit in making him look a little bit weaker in that he couldn't get, get the best of her. But it also more about pulling up Kate Bishop in like, you know, she can actually hold her own against him with her some some, some tricks and bits and pieces. I mean, at one point, you know, he, he literally got ran by a car, blew up, you know, he, but then got shot. <laughs> you know, he wasn't having a good day. <laughs> he wasn't having a good day. But I think him being in a physical confrontation does kind of miss... The point of the character now i know he did have some some confrontations in the daredevil series had to get physical a few times but that's not really what the character is supposed to be he's supposed to be the guy pulling the strings and and has the guys under him like maya and and her friend doing his dirty work so that his, his hands are clean both metaphorically and literally that said it, it this is obviously a build-up kate moment she needs somebody to fight and thematically he works he she can't yeah. fight her mom um, and then Swordsman is obviously, as we kind of predicted, 
not actually a bad guy. So who else? Is no, I, I kind of like what they did with him because it fell a little bit along the lines of his character arc in the story hadn't gone anywhere. So it made sense for him to be um, kind of, and he wanted obviously all the sort you know, they hadn't established him as a villain enough to make him become the villain. So I'm glad they actually left that alone. The whole thing. I mean, we pre pretty much predicted what was going to happen with the whole thing, with the ending. You know, I know people going on about like, you know, Clint tiring and Clint dying. No, he, this is wide open. He ain't gone anyway. He's in the same position he was in every movie he's ever left. <laughs> there is a solid implication that he is going to hand the title off to yeah. Kate and if not retire, at least take it easy and let her mm. handle the Hawkeye problems, which I'm totally fine with. Leave him available, yeah. um, but let Kate be Hawkeye moving mm. forward. Uh, I thought it, it it was a nice thematically satisfying ending, especially mm. to have her uh, end up with the Bartons at least temporarily. Well, it made sense. I mean, if you know, if you, if you just had your mother arrested, you know, at least might want to take him in for Christmas. So I, I thought that was all fine. It hit exactly what I wanted. Um, wasn't so keen on the idea that they were doing all of that because of the watch, because it was a her present or a gift from Shield. It, I, I got the impression that the watch was a side story, or or was like a, oh well, you're getting the Ronin outfit, and the watch is also there, so you might as well grab the watch at the same time. Yeah. But. I agree they did not do a good job of establishing the watch as important. They mentioned it a couple times. Obviously, he mm -hmm. broke into that one apartment to get it, but I kept forgetting about it. Well, it's been a lot there's been a lot of speculation because it's got like the number 19 on it that it's um Mockingbird and she was Mockingbird and you know has that outdone the Agents of Shield and the whole host of Easter eggs going down a thing and going, maybe it's just a watch and she was at one point agent 19, she retired or whatever, and somebody else Bobby Moore took over. You never know. Yeah, um, no, but... they, they, this one, I'm I'm willing to kind of let them have it both ways on this. Yeah. Um, as long as they don't go back and do a prequel series with her and Hawkeye and explicitly state what it is. Let let her be Mockingbird point one point zero yeah. and Bobby Morse um from Agent Shield be be two point or whatever. I, I mean, comic history, obviously, Hawkeye and Mockingbird are a couple yeah. uh, off and on, depending on who's alive at any given point. Uh, I hope they just leave it in, uh, ambiguous. Yeah. Just, just have it be a yeah. final Easter egg and, and leave it at that. We don't have to mess, mess around with uh, the continuity of Bobby yeah. Morris and, and this and that. So, Yeah. So, I mean, overall, I thought I, I enjoyed the season finale. It didn't hit on the same level that any of the other shows did. From the other, the other free ones, wasn't so. Was, yeah, uh, sorry. The the thing for me was I appreciated that it was low level. I mean, yeah, yeah. the, the truck suit mafia is like okay. Um, you're you're literally not a threat at all. But I, I liked how they did that, where it's like okay, this is just going to be Clinton Kate beating these guys up. They they mm. uh, they are so on a different level that they're just taking out an entire squad of these yeah. guys without even worrying about it. Uh, a little corny, a little cheesy, but it was a fun sequence. Uh, sorry, what were you going to say? I was going to say, my big thing really was the, was like the post credit scenes because we didn't have anything decent. We ended up with a musical, which kind of surprised me. I was expecting this to be someone sat in the audience or something kind of. Um, and then, like, kind of, anyone, really? Why did they? I, I guess they maybe wanted to give the full version of it because people wanted to see it. And like I, I understand, I could understand it being a, like a mid-season credit, and then we have another one to kind of set yeah. something up. But they didn't do it, and I think I was a little bit disappointed that we didn't get a, you know, they will return in season two or Echo coming up or something just to kind of. That was, I mean, you don't have to do these things, but it kind of felt like it. it I remember a bit. I think it was a Spider-Man where kind of Captain America sort of sits there and goes. So what are you waiting? You know, like, what are you yeah. doing? Here? <laughs> kind of thing. It kind of felt a bit like that. Yeah, you know, it, it was a fun little musical sequence. Um, intentionally cringy at, at points, obviously, and that was kind of the point of it. Um, but yeah, as an end credit sequence, this was entirely unsatisfying. I think if it had been mid-season, just kind of a little fun thing to get us through. Through the, mm -hmm. it would have been fine. And then something else here. Uh, and I was also doing the same. I was like, uh, is there going to be a character in the audience? Like, is Yelena going to be watching this? Even that yeah. would have been fine. Um, because they kept cutting to the the director. And I'm like, why are you cutting to the director? Am I supposed to know who this is? Yeah. I, I'm kind of hoping that was the actual musical director. Like, finally yeah. give, you know, one of them a shot at it. It's like, but get to the end of it. Like, why did you do this? This is yeah. a complete... I, 
out of every MCU movie and show that we've done, this is by far the most disappointing <laughs> end credit yeah. sequence we've gotten. Um, and I'm going to use this to, to leap into mm -hmm. my one other complaint here was I really would have liked an end credit sequence that set up Echo or at least kind of underscored whatever happened in the alley after the, the camera tilts away. Mm -hmm. Because um, obviously we've seen this, this sequence thousands of times in movies mm -hmm. where someone's pointing a gun at somebody and then the camera cuts away. Either you know it, it tilts, it pans, or, or yeah. we get a scene transition and then you hear the gunshot, but you don't see what happens. And the implication, obviously, is that she killed Kingpin, but yeah. <laughs> we've happening. seen this so many times, it's going to be like she shot into the air or she shot him in the chest, and we already know he's got a bulletproof vest on because he got shot with the arrow. Mm. And it's like, give us something on this. Uh, I, you know, so many people go, oh, he's dead because she shot him. Like, yeah, that's the most basic, like, yeah. But I... I, I it's a kind of a shame because in some way, you know, Kingpin was built up so impressively within the the Daredevil series. And then this kind of took it and just like instantly just tried to, they did adjust him, you know, much more like, more like he was in the comic books, you know, a little bit more, um, just to your average villain kind of thing. But I'm really looking forward to seeing where this goes. Kingpin's going to be, I'm sure going to be a big, um, going to be around for a while. Um, overall, it was it was a solid finale. It wasn't. It didn't. It kind of finished off that series. Going, yeah, okay. Book of Boba Fett next week. <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah. Looking forward to that. Um, just finishing the thought on Kingpin. Uh, even if they did kill him at this sequence, we can still expect he'll be in the Echo series yeah. at least in flashbacks. Oh, they did kill him. There's no way they brought him back I, just to kill him. Well, the way I'm reading it right now is they're leaving their options open. Um, because I wonder if they need to do some contract negotiations and they wanted to leave it open in case they weren't well, I able to leave in the comic books. There's a thing where she shoots him and in the, and he's blind for a bit. So that, like, um, I mean, I even saw some clips um, of him actually even had in one of the comic books, he actually had that outfit on with the, with the Hawaiian top, you know, because I thought that looked a bit odd from what we've seen him in there. But then it's like, no, he they have literally taken his outfit from the comic book. So it's like, yeah. okay, cool. You get a little tick point for that. Um, but no, I overall loved it. Great series. Great way of ending kind of off of that all. But it, yeah. It's an, I, some people will complain that it's not on the same, you know, level as loki and falcon and winter soldier in terms of like stakes and and how big it is i really like the, the 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 lower feel of it the lower stakes it just felt like a fun action movie to finish out christmas yeah not everything has to evolve the entire world and in, in fact i would prefer if they didn't it, you yeah. need these smaller stories in between um eternals rising but up the it becomes the it becomes otherwise it just becomes like Never ending of like this, it just loses its impact because it's happening yeah. too much. But anyway. right on that note, thank you very much for joining us for this week's episode. We'll be back um, next year with a new episode um, on the 1st of January. So we hope you all have a fantastic Christmas and a lovely new year. Um, as I said, you can find us over at what's on Disney Plus.com, vote in our end of year awards. You can obviously support us over at Patreon, YouTube channel members, etc. And on that, guys, thank you very much. See you guys soon. Merry Christmas. Yeah. See you next year. I hope 2022 has some great stuff in store for us. It looks like it does. Laters. I'd like to thank all of our Patreon and YouTube channel members for their support. You can become a member from as little as $2 a month and you get access to our weekly Q&A and much more.